In this video, I'll be talking about Lewis dot structures. And before I get into the actual material, I wanted to to make a quick review on valence shells. Valence electrons are simply electrons used for bonding. And you can determine the number of, of valence electrons an element has by writing its electron configuration using the noble gas core abbreviation. So for something like sodium, the it sodium has eleven, its atomic number is eleven, and when you write its electron configuration using noble noble gas abbreviations, the one that's closest to it is neon. That's ten. And then it'll only have one other electron. So sodium has one valence electron. And for the case of magnesium, which is just right to sodium, it has 12, it'll still be neon, 10, but magnesium will have two, well, it will have one more electron than what sodium has, because it has a full S shell, so magnesium has two valence electrons. So basically just by, by counting the number of electrons that remain after the core abbreviation you can find the the valence electrons. But you have to remember that valence electrons occupy the highest energy level. So if you had a two here like I'm just making it up like a 2p6 you would not count this electrons as valence electrons it, w it would still have 2 and a very easy way to find the number of valence electrons is by using the periodic table so just by following the group number of the main elements that means omitting this part you can that number tells you the number of valence electrons in that so for this group they will all have one valence electron for the one next to it they will all have two valence electrons and we said we don't count this ones and then we go to what we call the third group which is which starts with boron all of these will have three electrons and so on. The noble gases have eight and that's called they are they are the most stable so that when you have when an atom has eight valence electrons it's it's called a full octet. But I will call I will talk about that in a in a few minutes the halogens halides have seven this group has six and I didn't write this to because it becomes a little weird with the charges but that does, that doesn't really matter for valence electrons because the metalloids are there so are there, but carbon will have four, and nitrogen and phosphor will have five. So just by following the num the the main group numbers, again omitting this this section, you can just know how many valence electrons they have just by, but ju just by following the the group number again. So now let's get into actual Lewis structures. As I said before, noble gases have a full 
octet. And that means they have eight valence electrons. That's the most uh, an atom can have. And there's a something. There's a a rule called the octet rule that states that atoms will. attain a full octet so eight valence electrons by different bondings so gain slash loss for ionic and sharing Covalent bonds. So, in other words, if you have a bond being formed and the bond is ionic, one atom will lose electrons and the other atom will gain electrons. And the atom that gains the electrons will possess a full octet. And for covalent bonds, the electrons will be shared through bonds. And, I, and I'll represent this as I get into it. So first it's good just to write an element by, by itself and represent it as a Lewis structure. So a Lewis structure or a Lewis dot structure will represent three electrons as dots, so that's an electron and a bond will be a dash and that this bond this bond is two electrons so there will be an electron here an electron here and then you simply connect it but you will only write this for co covalent bonds because again there is no sharing in an ionic bond so, writing a dash between something like sodium and chlorine is wrong. There's, there's, it's only electrostatic interaction between them. So you only write dashes for covalent bonds. Now, for the atoms by itself, let's see. Let's start by writing the structure of aluminum. So, aluminum is in the third main group in the periodic table so right here I'm sorry this is a mess so right here so you'll have three valence electrons and three valence electrons you, as I just said down you, re you represent three electrons because because al aluminum is not bonded to anything right now you just write dots so one, two, three. Now let's do one just to see how the max would look like. So argon or neon or whatever. We know all noble gases have a full octet, so they have eight valence electrons. So you just write one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. You want to fill up one at a time because you you can't write it as for let's say the case of aluminum as this one two three that's it wouldn't represent it well so you want to write one at a time and then fill up again now let's do an ion so mm, as e is two minus. So let's look at our periodic table. Selenium is right here, and that is the sixth group. So it will have six valence electrons.
This is number six. So, for selenium, if it wasn't an ion, it would be one, two, three, four, five, and six. But because it has a two minus up there, that means it ha it is electron rich, so it has two extra electrons. And that two extra electrons, let's I'm going to write them with a different color, give selenium a full octet. And just because selenium by itself doesn't have a full octet, you'll want to write that in brackets and put a two minus there. Because not putting the brackets would mean that selenium is in it in its atomic form and eight electrons for selenium in, in its atomic form is wrong. So always make sure to write an ion in brackets and then the charge on top of the bracket. So now let's get into ionic bonding. Ionic bonding structures. Ionic bonding will be pretty much the same as what we just did but you will write two elements instead of one. So let's go with the basic. Sodium, chlorine, O4, two sodium, and two sodium chlorides. Now how do you represent this? You so you first want to represent what you had before. So you have two sodiums. And sodium is a first group element, so it only has one electron. And then we have two chlorines. And chlorine is a, is a halogen, so it's the seven group. So we'll have seven valence electrons. Seven. And when the bond is formed, because it's an ionic bond, there will be no real bonding, so no dashes. So you just write it as this. Then this, as I said before, when a bond is formed, that molecule or that molecule will want that compound will want to get a full octet. So, this electron will flow right here, filling up the chlorine. It doesn't go the other way around because non-metals like to be electron rich and metals like to be electron deficient because just metals are cations and non-metals are anions. No metals tend to have a very high electronegativity, so they, they like having those extra electrons right there. So we have two here, and then our sodium won't have anything, so and our chlorine will have eight. I'm going to rep to represent that electron with a different color. So then this becomes. positive because that sodium is now electron deficient and this chlorine becomes negative because it is now electron rich so when you do ionic bonds always make sure to write the the form compound in brackets because it's not the same as what we had here that sodium would is now electron deficient. It has one less valence electron as what it had before. So you have to write that positive write that positive charge on top of the brackets. And the same goes for the chlorine, it's now electron rich because of that extra electron. You will not find sodium as a as this in in nature. So not writing the charge would just make it wrong. And I'll I'll do covalent bonds in the next video just to not make this video too long. And if you if you found it helpful, like it and share it with your friends.